with Liberty Me. I'm Kyle Platt, uh, here with Dr. Robert Murphy. Uh, he is author of uh, a lot of text, fantastic stuff. Uh, you know, uh, chaos theory is fantastic. Um, you know, all the economic stuff. He is a fellow at the um, Ludwig von Mises Institute, and he's written a Liberty Guide for Liberty Me, which is uh, how to become a independent intellectual. I've wanted to talk to you forever, Bob, and it's, it's an absolute pleasure, so thanks so much for being on. Well, thanks for having me. I'm really excited about what you guys are doing over there. I'm not an economist, but my layman's understanding of the ACA or the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare or whatever name you want to call it is nuanced. I don't, looking at the ACA, I can't seem to understand how on earth it can possibly be worse than the kind of healthcare quote unquote system that was prevalent in America before. And, you know, I understand the, the criticisms of Obamacare and I agree with them. I think a, a mandate to buy private insurance is terrible. But your economist's take, how is Obamacare or the ACA worse than what we had before? Uh, well, so first of all, I, I do think it's worse. I think it's, it's going to be really bad. And the more I'm studying it and getting feedback from people in the field, I don't mean economists. I mean like ER doctors and people who work in billing at Vanderbilt and stuff like that. Um, it, uh, they're, they're giving me re reports that they, they don't see how it's going to last even through the year. And so, I mean, maybe they're just exaggerating or, or they're just overwhelmed because they're seeing stuff in their face. But uh, so I do think it's going to be really bad. So to, to try to get a sense of, well, why is that? I mean, part of what it's doing is it's f forcing uh, – Healthcare providers, you know, whether hospitals, outpatient clinics, or health insurers, to provide services to people that you know by law they can't turn them away, and yet it's not providing an adequate mechanism for them to get paid for that. And so, for a lot of these things, like it's it's putting hospitals in an untenable position where they have to pay for all this stuff, and now you know the government's reducing the the payments they're going to get. They're changing the billing formula, so there's. There's a lot of stuff in the ACA legislation besides just, you know, the, the 30,000 foot takeaway view of, oh, now everyone has to buy health insurance, but insurance companies can't turn you down. I mean, that, even that by itself is bad, but there's a lot of stuff. I mean, the, as you know, the legislation is huge. There's all kinds of stuff in there that are, are re is wreaking havoc on people. Um, but I mean, even j just in the narrow sense, you say, well, how could it be worse? Well, if you were a relatively healthy person before, and you once in a while, you know, once in a while got sick and so you'd pay for it out of pocket. Now you're being forced to buy something that might be several thousand dollars a year. And so, you know, that's how you're worse is you're out that money. And it's not even clear that you're going to get great medical care because now if the system's being overwhelmed. You know, Obamacare is not creating more doctors and nurses. It's just now creating a bunch more customers who are getting stuff before that, they, that wasn't available to them. And so it, it's going to lead to rationing of care and prices are going to rise. So that that's, to me, that's kind of the way it's, it's going to make things worse is it's going to, I think, ultimately drive what little we had left in the private sector out of business. And it's going to lead to calls for just an outright, you know, government single payer system. You're an economist, um, but you also, from, from reading your work, you also seem to be something of a humanitarian. What would your response be to the criticism that without something like the ACA, that only people with a lot of money can afford good health care, and that you know people need to be cared for. You know, even people without the means to pay for this kind of thing should be cared for. Right. So, I mean, that's what happens with just about anything, any government program that's tied to an actual social problem. That you know, you say, oh well, you know, just just because something has legis name. Just because it's called the Affordable Care Act doesn't mean it's actually giving people care at affordable prices. Actually, the opposite's happening. We're seeing that. Um, but it's uh, – so, so yes, there are people who are not being served well by the healthcare industry. And, uh, but the, the solution to that is, okay, we, we, we want to get more uh, output in this sector and we want to do, bring down prices. To me, you, know, you don't say, well, this is a job you – know, that sounds like a job for the government. To you know, create more output and to make things cheaper. No, the government. I mean, anything it touches, it makes more bureaucracy and it causes prices to go up. So 
if you're saying, you know, well, well, what would you do instead? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, starting with getting rid of you know, the AMA and other ways that the, the American Medical Association, other ways that the government artificially restricts the provision of healthcare services. You know, so the government has all kinds of ways that it directly and explicitly limits supply in this area. And, you know, that's one way you could just open it up really quickly and bring prices down. Sure. You're a big fan of karaoke, and I am as well. I actually hosted a, a karaoke showdown at the last uh, International Students for Liberty conference that was huh? extremely successful. What's the best way that we can fight government oppression with karaoke? Uh, holding the mic close to your mouth so people can hear you. I think that's the biggest tip I can give. Most definitely. Most definitely. What are some of your staples? Uh, well, they evolve over time. It depends on the crowd, but it, 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 you can't go wrong with Roy Orbison's Pretty Woman. If I don't really know much about the crowd, and I'm just, you know, that, that I usually establish myself with that. You got to be careful. Some of the standards, just, you know, young kids out there, they try this stuff and they just blows up in their face. Be really careful with picking like a Sinatra song because a lot of times the arrangements are different. They're not the version you know. Bobby Darren's Mac the Knife is my all-time favorite. But again, only if I've tested it out at the place because there's different arrangements, and if it's the wrong arrangement, you're just dead. And true, so, true. Yeah, so that's, um, let's see, what else? Uh, but Sinatra's New York, New York, usually they don't screw that one up, and so that, that one's a pretty safe one for me to do. That works with all kinds of crowds. You have to know your range. Uh, there, there are a lot of tips that, that I would give to, um, to people interested in joining the karaoke fray, but you definitely have to know your range you should check on the key of the song before you do it. Um, and, and oftentimes, songs are much higher than you thought they were. That, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Like, for example, I have discovered that I can do Ricky Nelson and Eric Clapton. And, you know, when you listen to them on the radio, you don't normally think that they have high voices. You think of, like, Air Supply or the guy from Journey. But what I realize when I think I'm doing a really high voice, I'm just doing, like, Ricky Nelson, who does not sound very high on the radio, and that's just because I don't have a high range. So, yeah, I definitely agree picking. Also, too, there's a distinction between a song that's great in the ra on the radio versus a song that's great at karaoke. Like, you don't want a song that's like AHA's Take On Me. If I'm on, I can actually hit those high notes, but there's like a long interlude in the middle of that song that just, it just totally kills the mood. You know, you're sitting there and it's like, well, the music just is playing. So I, you can't do it in a karaoke business. Right, right. Yeah. The 16 bar guitar solo is, is bad, bad for karaoke, unless you're willing to dance. Now, here's the thing. If you're yeah. willing to perform, then those bars are fine. But if you're just going to stand there, you know, get out of there. Okay, let, let me give you another one. Also, what you want to do is establish yourself, and then, like, if you're a guy, and then if there's, like, like a, a girl, like, you know, a bachelorette party or, like, it's some girl's birthday, and there's, like, a bunch of giggly girls, then you do the Beach Boys Kokomo or a song like that, and then it's fine with the musical interludes because everybody's dancing on a stage and it's fun. Right, right. That, there, these are exceptions to the rule. There are caveats to, yeah. uh, to, to the, the 16 bar guitar solo problem. Yeah, mo most definitely. But, uh, you know, I, I do think that the performance is really the key no matter what. Um, you know, it's not just singing. You're not up there to just showcase your, showcase your voice. It has to be a, a complete performance. Yeah, and as with everything, I mean, confidence is 50% of it. It, it. You know, if you go up there knowing, oh, they're going to love us, I can't wait to get it, like, it'll just come through. Whereas I have seen people who are technically perfect, but they're kind of, you know, shy, they're not making eye contact, and people just tune them out, and it just, it's, it, you know, it goes nowhere. Most definitely. So next time we're at a conference together or something like that, are we going to have a karaoke showdown? Can we do this? I can't believe you even have to ask me that. Well, I mean, okay. But we, we need, we've actually done it uh, once. We've got Mises Austrian? I mean, yeah. Yeah. There was, uh, there was yeah, there was the, the Mises Circle in uh, Houston uh, where we ended up singing karaoke, uh, but, but there wasn't really a, a showdown. It wasn't really, there wasn't a big deal out of it. But yeah, I, this, is the, it, this is a challenge to you. We can, uh, we can get this going next time. I look forward to it. Sounds great. Thanks so much for talking with us, Bob. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I look forward to doing it in the future. Thanks for having me.